The Roman Empire conquered the known world, or at least that's what many history books say. But what if they conquered the entire world? Today we're going to find that out in EU4. From Britannia to New Zealand, it is all Roman. Governing capacity in 1444 is going to be tough on them, to say the least. What do you expect to see? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content to come. Yeah, so it uh, turns out that the Romans actually did conquer the entire known world. In this timeline, the entire world. Obviously, uh, governing capacity is going to be an issue. They're even a lucky nation, because I forgot to turn that off. But uh, yeah, they're currently having some issues with that stuff. So it's hard to say what exactly is going to happen. I reckon they will release some subjects to lower their governing capacity. And uh, they're probably going to end up having some rebels because uh, with a nation that big, the AI just can't fight rebels. So, you know, there's only one way to find out, and that is to speed five and unpause. <laughs> yeah, this is about what I was expecting. Within one month, they have released Ming, whose liberty desire is 100%. There's probably going to be more to come. Within the same month, we have Timurids being released as a subject, as well as England. One month later, the Egyptian Mamluks have been released, and uh, now it is the Ottomans as well as VJ in the south. Uh, they are literally all disloyal. So uh, yeah, probably not gonna work out super well for the Roman Empire. My gosh, whenever I tag to these guys, my frame rate is really low. Currently their governing capacity is 4,137 out of 775. Looks like they've got uh, quite a few rebels that are looking to enforce some demands as well as in their subjects land. So only time will tell. They are also extremely prestigious with all of these provinces and the trading bonuses and whatnot. But uh, as uh, rebels start to break away, I don't know if you guys know this modifier, but uh, uncontested cores can be quite penalizing for prestige. And when you've got like hundreds of uncontested cores, it doesn't help your prestige. They do have quite a large army, 172,000 men, but I don't think it's going to be enough to uh, cover all the rebels. I mean, they have rebels in the steppes over here. They have rebels in the steppes over here. They have rebels in Muscovy. They have rebels in India. They have rebels in India. They have rebels in Burma and Southeast Asia. So they're probably not going to be able to cover all of them. Yeah, they've got rebels basically everywhere. And uh, I don't think they're going to be able to put them down. And so it's only a matter of time before a couple of breakaway states occur. Oh, yeah. 14 years in, we've got uh, quite a few. <laughs> breakaway states more than I actually expected all the way from Africa up into Asia. And you can see here this uh, uncontested cores modifier is only going to go up as they lose more and more land to rebels. So take a look at this here. We've got a Jewish nation, Simeon here. That's pretty sweet. So, uh, you know, maybe we'll see some more unique and rare things here in this situation. Um, North America as well as South America are both still very loyal for the most part. There's a couple of uh, disloyal ones. I think Mexico, maybe the new Roman Empire are. But how about that Zulu? I don't know about you guys, but I love to see a big Zulu. For the most part, Africa is just an absolute mess in general. There is a ton of releasables that are popping out via rebels, and uh, it doesn't look so good for the Roman Empire. The steppes, India, Southeast Asia, China, Manchuria, they all continue to pop out new tags. And the subjects that they do have are all 100% disloyal. Uh, I assume that they're all allied to each other. So yeah, it's only a matter of time before a little war breaks out and the Roman Empire has to release their subjects that they do have. And as I said, uncontested cores was definitely going to get a little bit gnarly. Look at this, 39 prestige per year they are losing. Safe to say these guys are locked at minus 100. Zero out of 10, not a very prestigious Roman Empire. Well, 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 I see some occupation lines and that can only mean one thing. The subjects have united and uh, declared war on their overlord. Um, they also brought in a couple of the colonial nations. So yeah, I'm not so sure. These guys over here are probably going to get pummeled by uh, the copious number of subjects over here in the New World who did remain loyal. But somehow these guys only have 163,000 troops, which is, uh, yeah, not a lot compared to the totality of their former subjects. We do have a cool looking Muscovy over here. He's got like an exclave over here <laughs> inside of the Roman Empire. So I kind of like that. France has popped out. So yeah, France is now a subject of the Roman Empire under Consul Jean de Saint-Omer. I don't know how you pronounce that. I, I did my best. Castile, also a new subject for the Roman Empire. So uh, yeah, as soon as their subjects declare independence, they just release a few more. Also looks like they have a massive coalition because they're literally not allowed to take provinces because their aggressive expansion impact is plus 70%, which is, um, yeah, it's pretty. that's pretty high. <laughs> so yeah, this war looks mostly even, but I think that the bulk of the troops are actually overseas. Um, like a lot of them are even in Cuba. So we'll see exactly how things go. The coalition, for example, has over double the cannons of the Romans, which is important for sieging down forts. Though the Romans have naval dominance, so 
Hard to say exactly what's going to happen here. No surprise over here, the uh, New World nations were completely overrun. Like They got full occupied in like a couple of months and uh, they pieced out separately. <laughs> However, in the old world, the uh, Ottomans are getting absolutely pummeled. They are taking super heavy losses and the occupations are only getting worse for them. Their war exhaustion is going to keep going up and they're definitely going to be having a hard time affording to buy it down. In uh, 1567, Still no Protestant Reformation here. It looks like the Romans have actually eaten up a bit of the provinces over here. They do still have plenty of subjects, but they are mostly disloyal, though Mali over here is a good little subject of the Roman Empire. New World nations are still the same. Sadly, it appears that Simeon down here was actually annexed and uh, the Jews are no longer in the game. We got a Shia Gujarat over here. Yo, check this out. We've got the Independent Republic of Friesland supporting the independence of France from the Romans. Also, that Sprite Pack is pretty sick. Look at that hat. I would wear that hat. Would you wear that hat? It does appear that we've got a Colombia, Brazil in South America, as well as a good old Mexico up here in uh, North America. Taking a look at the diplomatic map mode, a couple of their subjects have broken free, but a couple of them are still loyal. Currently in a defensive war, it looks like Ming is uh, feeling pretty strong. And considering the fact that uh, they've got 383,000 compared to Ming's 350, with no mandate, by the way. Uh, yeah, it's looking pretty bad for them. They also have their allies of the Ottomans with 138,000, taking quantity and offensive military ideas. As for ideas for the Romans, they took eco-offensive, so that's pretty good. Espionage, admin, and now they're working on defensive. Get their uh, morale up a bit, I think. Eco-offensive gives uh, artillery combat ability, so you actually get quite a few buffs to your armies. And as far as the great powers go here in 1676, we've got the Roman Empire way out in front. There's obviously no surprise there, but Ming with 1600 development, Followed by Timurids, Mexico with about 750, VJ, England, Ottoman, and the Mamluks there in the five to 700 range. And I hadn't thought about this, but uh, <laughs> doesn't look like uh, we were gonna get colonialism. We're 176 years past the date and uh, still hasn't spawned. Uh, luckily for us, it's not required for these guys. I don't think at least, but uh, yeah, colonialism is probably not gonna spawn this time around. It would appear that Sunda down here in the south as well as in the Malaccas is doing quite well with Sulu, not, not to be confused with Sulu up here in the Philippines doing pretty good as well. Champasak, I don't think I've ever seen this tag. Uh, I assume it's probably one of these little OPM stateless societies over here, but uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with it. VJ is uh, snaking up and taking as much of the coast from the Romans as they possibly can. Good on you. And it appears that Timurids have uh, reached up and taken a bit of land from Kazakhstan greatest country in the world, by the way. Though over in Europe, they do still control the majority of the development, so they're still going strong over in this area. Though I won't lie, I didn't actually see this little Armenia over here. They kind of uh, blend in with the colors. At a quick glance, you don't really see them. But uh, yeah, we do have an Armenia. Also, how about this little like two province Serbia? That's a good one as well. The new world is the same that it was before Mexico, Colombia, and Brazil. So apparently Britain was feeling pretty cheeky. They declared an imperialist war on Rome. Uh, so yeah, that's a thing. But I think I know why they're feeling pretty strong about this. Uh, somehow, I don't know, they have no manpower, they have no men in the field, they've got no prestige. Doesn't look like the Romans are doing well. We do, however, have a wide array of releasable tags over here in the New World. United States, Illinois, Canada, Alaska, Mexico, Colombia, Brazil, and they have been joined by Chile, as well as a couple of native nations over here, I believe. But yeah, it is uh, 1737 and we still don't have a reformation, so I don't think it's going to be spawning this time around. So they're just stuck in the Age of Discovery this whole time. Kind of stupid. I think I might have to find a way to work around that in the future, but you know, you live and you learn. The Roman Empire over here allied to the very powerful, the mighty, the Zulu, with their subject of France and Delhi, both of whom are extremely disloyal. The colonies that they do have left are somewhat loyal. No, no, they're not really, just these two. Ming has grown a bit, but I think it's mostly just from the other releasables, like they took some provinces from these guys. Maybe a couple from Zhu over here. We even have Ming in Japan next to this releasable Mori tag. And yeah, the map is gonna look quite a bit different. Uh, we decided to go a little bit farther because 1821 just didn't quite have as much information on the screen as I would have liked. It was still pretty pink, so I decided to uh, still let the Roman Empire get gobbled up a bit more as time went on. So as you can see here, it is January of 1985. The great powers of the world are Revolutionary Ming, Great Britain, the Ottomans, VJ, Revolutionary Gurkhani Empire, aka the Revolutionary Mughals, Mexico, Revolutionary Mamluks, and then Russia. Economic hegemon of the world is Great Britain, with Revolutionary Ming, 
with the military hegemon. And I just had to go check Google because uh, I thought this was the Belgian flag, but it's actually flipped black on the left and red on the right for the blood of those who fought to, oh wait, it's Belgium. Nobody fought for the independence of Belgium, except for the British. Either way, here we are. We've got the uh, British Franco Union looking very solid, except for uh, the Southern parts over here where, uh, yeah, Ottomans, Ottomans are a little scary. It looks like they were actually going for Roman Empire at some point. Though I don't know, the Mamluks actually did pretty good. It's kind of funny that even with uh, Rome controlling the whole world, we still end up with a big beefy Ottomans and uh, revolutionary Mamluks looking pretty good as well. Britain is in the north of Iberia with Castile throughout most of it, with Morocco kicking them out of Al-Andalus. Benin and Songhai take up most of Western Africa, but there is a revolutionary Canon Bornu, but it uh, looks like they, yeah, they're about to get annexed by Songhai. Benin, the Grand Republic of Benin here, does have probably one of the best flags in the game, if not the best flag. Um, it's just, it's beautiful. It's poetic, you know? We've got a Zimbabwe right next to a Zulu, which I really love to see. Both of these tags are kind of rare in vanilla, so that's pretty sweet. I don't know who this Makua is, but they are kind of like the uh, Kilwa in this run. Yemen is huge over here in uh, the Horn of Africa, parts of Arabia, as well as like, uh, is this... Uh, Nubia, I believe would you would call this area Nubia. Revolutionary Khorasan and Revolutionary Afghanistan split up uh, the Revolutionary Gurkhani Empire. So lots of revolution this time around. Also, this looks remarkably like a real Afghanistan, minus like, I'm pretty sure this little uh, wasteland would go to them as well. But the borders are like, mm, pretty good. Revolutionary Mazdaran as well. Can't forget them. We do have Iraq over here. Revolutionary Ming looking extremely good all the way over into Burma up in the north here. The fact that there wasn't a mandate was uh, probably good for them. I, I'm pretty sure the mandate not being a thing allowed the Ming to be strong. Kind of funny when you think about it. We do still have an Ayutthaya down here, right next to this Champa sack that I had mentioned earlier. VJ actually ended up colonizing quite a bit over here in uh, Indonesia. Sunda did pretty good though. They still have quite a bit of land over in this area. Even a little bit of land over here on Sumatra. Majapahit did end up making an appearance as well. Roman Australia is uh, over here in New Zealand, and Australia is controlled exclusively by aboriginals. Japan has been united for the most part. They fought with the Ming for a few provinces down here, but it does look like they're about to gain a couple provinces over here from the revolutionary Roman Republic. And when you take a look over here at America, you see America in the year 2020. We've got Illinois over here, United States over here, and then the rest is just Mexico. It's all Mexico. Alaska, fulfilling its ambitions of getting all the way down and taking Washington state. It's all right, you can have it. The Continental 48 does not want it. And somehow Canada got absolutely bonked on the head by a bunch of natives, Inu, Micmac, a couple of these guys down here. Split them up, I don't know. American West Cuba over here. Looks like the Bay of Pigs was a success in this timeline. Colombia gobbled up quite a bit of Peru. Brazil had some solid gains as well down in here. And it looks like La Plata was actually gobbled up by a couple of natives, which is pretty sweet. Ah, you'll love to see it. A couple of American provinces down here in Sicily, right next to an independent Malta. Very nice. We have a revolutionary Bavaria. Saxony had a bit of a comeback. Friesland had a bit of a migration. Hanover is here. And it definitely looks like Britain is uh, trying to get all that coast. Britain is Croatia in this timeline as well. Sweden is right here and OPM in Dahl, and it looks like they're about to get eaten by the Ruskies. Sad times for the Swedes. You will notice here that it is the age of revolutions and that is because the Reformation did end up spawning. I think what happened is Saxony broke free from the Romans and since there was a country in Germany, they were able to spawn it. I think that's how it happened. And then somehow Great Britain ended up spawning colonialism, the printing press, all that stuff. So they all ended up happening eventually. Over here in Western Europe, Anglican is definitely the preeminent power. Lots of Catholics, but uh, not a lot of it is actually accepted in that country. To be honest with you, it looks like the Catholics have kind of gotten smushed because they all came to the new world over here. Orthodox looks pretty good, of course, with the Russians. Sunni looks pretty good over here. To be honest with you, a lot of the religious map doesn't look too different because most of the rebels that were released actually followed the religion of that area. So kind of makes sense. I do kind of love the fact that we just have a little Hindu pocket over here in Iran. I am still sad to see that the Jews got pushed out of this area. I was hoping to see a Jewish nation pull through and be strong in this time, but you know, it is what it is. The South of Africa, they love feet. Every single one of them. They are, they are obsessed with them. They love the smell. They love the, the look. Weirdos. And Australia is a bunch of animists. And uh, speaking of animists, quite a lot of them down here in Brazil, as well as the natives over here. It does not look like Colombia decided to do any conversions though. They are mostly animist and inti even though their state religion is Catholic. Cultural map mode of North America is mostly just native because, you know, it wasn't colonized. It was like given to them by console command. So that's not super weird to think about. Same thing here down in the South, though some of these guys may have converted each other. Um, usually they're pretty clean with the borders for cultures, but 
Some of these are not so clean. So maybe some nations did some culture conversion down here. Quite a bit of culture conversion up here. Looks like the Muscovites have invaded Sweden and Norway, as well as Finland for that matter. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that the Franks decided to culture convert a few of these guys over here at some point. The Koreans got a few culture conversions done, so good on you boys. We've got Polynesians over here on Taiwan. That's pretty sweet. It may actually be the culture at 1444. I, I don't really know, actually. Papuan over here and the Maori down here in NZ. Now, if any now anybody who does not know about the Maori, you got to look them up. They have the coolest wedding ritual I have ever seen where they like do this dance and they stick their tongue out. It's really cool. You got to check it out. The timeline is absolutely completely borked because I used console commands to give them all of their provinces. So you can just ignore that in the background. But guys, if you want early access to this, you can actually get early access to every video. If you subscribe to my Patreon for as little as $5 a month, you get early access to every single video. So big shout out to my patrons. I could not do this without you guys. If you want to show your support and leave a like on the video, it is hugely appreciated. And if you want to join my Discord, my subreddit, my Twitter, those things are all linked in the description below the video. But that is all I've got for you for this one. So until next time, stay chill.